We're going to start off our discussion of chemical equilibrium by talking about the extent of reaction and defining some quantities which will be useful to us later. So let's consider we have a standard reaction here. We have A plus B going to C plus D, reactants on the, on the left and products on the right. And each of these has a stoichiometric coefficient indicated by nu and then subscript for each chemical species, nu A, nu B for reactants, nu C, nu D for products. So what we're going to define, as is suggested by the video's title, is a quantity C, Greek letter C, which we're going to call the extent of reaction. So the extent of reaction is going to how, tell us how things are changing one direction or the other uh, in terms of the number of moles uh, of all these quantities as the reaction progresses. And it is going to be in units of moles. So point of note that stoichiometric coefficients are unitless. So our extent of reaction when you have a stoichiometric coefficient times extent of reaction, that will give you a total unit of moles on that quantity. Okay, so for our reactants and products, let's say we have our set of reactants, I, and we have our set of products, J. Now we're going to have that the number of moles of a given reactant is going to be the number of moles initially present of that reaction, so number of moles of I naught minus its stoichiometric coefficient times the extent of reaction. So the extent of reaction is how many net moles the reaction is moving from, pro from reactants to products, and for every stoichiometric uh, equivalent of a given reactant, you will remove that many moles at that given extent of reaction. And then looking at our products, we similarly have, but with the opposite sign, that the number of moles of a given product J is going to be the initial moles of product J, NJ naught, and then plus its stoichiometric coefficient, nu J, times the extent of reaction. And then we're also going to look at um, how do these number of moles change throughout the reaction, and that's going to be DNI, the differential of number of moles of a given reactant. Well, that's just, we're taking the, deriv taking the derivative of the sides here. So this is a constant, it goes away, and we are interested in uh, this qu quantity can change here. So we have minus nu I DC. So for some given change in the extent of reaction, we have a we have minus stoichiometric coefficient of the moles of reactant is how it's going to change. And for the products, you can probably guess that the change in the number of moles of a given product is going to be, this is a constant, so it's getting ignored. It's going to be plus stoichiometric coefficient times change in extent of reaction, dc. Okay, and the quantity of interest for any situation where we're talking about equilibrium, be it chemical equilibrium or any other kind of equilibrium, is going to be the Gibbs energy. And the Gibbs energy, in this case, for our specific reaction we have here, AB going to CD, then our Gibbs energy is a function of the number of moles of A, B, C, and D. So if we're interested in the differential of G, then we need the derivative of G with respect to all of these individual variables here. So for example, we have DG equals partial derivative with respect to temperature at constant pressure and number of moles of every kind of substance times DT plus partial derivative with respect to pressure at constant T and number of moles times the change in pressure, plus, and then we have terms for every individual uh, chemical species present. We're going to say that this set of J here equals A, B, C, and D. So we're going to have sum over J, 
partial derivative of the Gibbs energy with respect to number of moles of J, and that's at constant temperature, pressure, and number of every kind of mole which isn't J, so we'll say N I not equal to J, and then times the change in the number of moles of quantity J there. So in this case, this is a six-dimensional function. It has six partial derivatives and six total terms here, including the four in this sum. Then we remind ourselves from previous chapters that we have dg dt is negative s, the en negative entropy. We have dg dp is equal to volume. And we have that dg dni the, chain, the partial derivative of Gibbs energy with respect to number of moles of any given chemical substance I is equal to the chemical potential of that substance. So what we're going to be interested in is we're going to be holding the number of mo the, uh, temperature and pressure are going to be constant. So we're going to have temperature and pressure equals Ch their change equals zero, so they are constant. And then that gives us an expression for our change in our Gibbs energy here, substituting in these factors here. Then we're going to have dg is going to equal sum over all chemical species present times their chemical potential times the change in the number of moles of that species. Now, we saw what DNI is. We defined what the change in each type of chemical species in this reaction is going to be in terms of the extent of reaction. So instead of having four distinct variables for the change of every number of mole of each kind of reactant and product, what we can do is use the extent of reaction, and then we're going to have a function which is only going to be have a, one variable that's going to be changing here. because these are all controlled by the stoichiometric coefficients in how they change relative to one another. Okay, so using that, we'll have that the change in the Gibbs energy is going to equal doo -doo -doo. reactants have negative stoichiometric coefficient times its chemical potential UA minus nu b mu b plus positive sign for the products because those moles are being created with extent of reaction nu c mu c plus nu d mu d and then all of that times the change in the extent of reaction so here we've made the Gibbs energy its change depend on only one variable and that's the extent of reaction so then we can divide both sides by dc and what we'll get is the partial derivative of the Gibbs energy or in this case what ends up being almost like a total derivative but we are still keeping temperature and pressure constant so let's ca still call it a partial derivative we're going to have that the partial derivative of Gibbs energy with respect to extent of reaction at constant temperature and pressure is equal to nu d mu d plus nu c mu c minus nu b mu b minus nu a mu a. Okay, so that's our partial derivative of Gibbs energy with respect to extent of reaction. This nice quantity here, which tells us how far the reaction is going in one direction or the other. And what we in fact have here is what we're going to define as the Gibbs energy change of reaction. That is going to define to be equal to our partial derivative of the Gibbs energy with respect to temperature and pressure. So when we talk about the Gibbs energy change of reaction, that is going to be equal to the Gibbs energy change upon changing the extent of reaction by one mole. So if I write that out, we have delta RG is going to be the change 
in the Gibbs energy. for a reaction when the change in the extent of reaction is equal to plus one mole. Okay, so this is our extent of reaction. This gives us our Gibbs energy of reaction. And going forward, we'll be able to define lots of nice quantities that we've heard from general chemistry uh, with respect to and surrounding this Gibbs energy of reaction, which is one of the key quantities in chemical equilibrium.